Hi. Uh, I got a lot of interest in my Mocha Pop video, and I want to thank everybody for viewing, uh, for leaving comments. It's a lot of fun to like engage with people and interact and hear how many people are interested uh, in what I put out there. So thanks a lot, you guys. Uh, the video is so popular that I thought it might be uh, worthwhile to go over some of the comments, make a follow-up video, get into a bit more of the details. So this is why you make your mocha pot wrong version 2.0 or something like that. So basically there's kind of two main kinds of comments I seem to be getting. Uh, one of them is the question of whether or not you pre-boil the water when you put it in the mocha pot. And the second question is, I did everything you told me and my coffee still sucks. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to address both of those. So on the first issue, whether or not you pre-boil the water, man, this is like the most controversial debate in a uh, coffee community in terms of uh, mocha pot usage. This is like the debate between Laurel and Yanni, or the debate about like what color that dress is, just to throw some old internet things at you. Everybody has like really different opinions about this. So the objections to pre-boiling come from basically three directions. One is authenticity of it, how it was originally done. The second is along the practicality of it. And the third is obviously the most important, the actual quality of the coffee you get out. So I have seen some comments and looked at videos uh, and talked to people and there is an argument to be made that Italians don't preheat their water before putting it in the mocha pot and Bialetti himself of course never intended that. Um, I don't dispute that at all. There is some guy who commented uh, on my channel saying I'm Italian, you're doing it wrong, this is not how we do it. I don't dispute that at all. Uh, that the more authentic Italian way would be to just put cold water in there uh, and certainly when Bialetti was designing this thing in the 20s in fascist Italy, I don't think people are going through all the rigmarole of having an electric kettle and then pouring it in there and then heating it up again. Certainly that was not how it was originally done. Uh, that being said, the thing about authenticity is I don't actually care that much. The most authentic way to get from New York to California would be through a covered wagon pulled by oxen and dying of cholera. So authenticity not not winning me over on an argument. I totally concede the points that are there, but I care about quality. Uh, item number two, the practicality. Uh, I saw a video by a guy who was making a mocha pot how-to instruction, and he says, don't put hot water and you're gonna have to handle a really hot base. That's a recipe for disaster. Okay, sure. Uh, from a practical standpoint, yeah, you use uh, an oven mitt, and if you don't want to deal with that, yeah, it's more dangerous to deal with screwing in um, the top on top of a hot base, sure but I am fine using oven mitts. Uh, and then argument number three, which is the matter of quality. So I'm engaged in kind of a lighthearted debate with me and these uh, coffee roasters in England somewhere, the Boole brothers, uh, who are saying that, no, 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 no. You shouldn't preheat the water because you want the water to spend more time in contact with the coffee. Uh, in the other direction, uh, James Hoffman himself appearing not notably not on his own channel, but in a, a different channel as a cameo, uh, says that you should preheat it uh, because this will minimize the amount of heating that you're doing to the coffee grinds themselves. So people go kind of both ways on this. Uh, now in response to uh, the Gould brothers, I just don't buy that the coffee, that the water is gonna be in contact with the coffee. They claim it around 60 degrees Celsius, but the vapor pressure of water as you're heating it uh, isn't going to exceed atmospheric pressure until boiling. That's why water boils when it boils. So maybe you get a little bit more evaporation, but the vast majority of the water is not going to be pushing against the coffee in any substantial amount uh, up until you have some of the water actually boiling and pushing the remainder of the coffee all the way up. So I don't think it's going to extend the contact time between the water and the coffee prints. I'm open to like being wrong about that. I just don't see it. Uh, and then in response to uh, James Hoffman's uh, remark about that you don't want to heat the coffee grinds up, um, that, that sounds reasonable to me, sure. Uh, but as with all things coffee brewing, you shouldn't listen to uh, people who appear in YouTube videos who make very bold claims. You should try it for yourself. So I tried it for myself. I have tried doing this with cold water. I have tried doing it with uh, preheated water. I can't tell the difference. 
Some of these people claim that there's a very strong difference to them. I can't tell the difference. So to me, the fact that I preheat it is solely a matter of practicality. Uh, it's, mo it's both more energy efficient uh, and faster just to preheat the water with an electric kettle. So I do it that way. I don't notice a difference in the quality. Uh, maybe that depends on beans. If you notice a difference in the quality, then go for what you're gonna go for. Your mileage may, va uh, may vary. Don't listen to us, just just do it on your own. Uh, the other comment I've gotten uh, is people who say that they're, they're trying all my things here and their coffee still sucks. Uh, and so I'm just gonna give sort of some general like things to try out that could improve your overall result. I mean, the, the basic issue with mocha pots is that they constantly overbrew. They, they brew too much, they extract too much. You're, you're extracting 18 to 22% of the coffee into the water. And the classic problem with a mocha brewer is that you get more than 22%, so it gets over bitter. Now, what are the variables you can adjust in terms of how much your coffee brews? More time, higher temperature, and higher pressure all cause your coffee to brew faster or more. Uh, whereas so a larger grind size causes your coffee to brew more slowly. So if you want to model this with a very rough equation, you would say maybe time times temperature times pressure divided by surface area your average coffee grain is equal to some number. And that number is going to be a constant uh, that's going to depend a bit on you know what kind of coffee beans you're using. So where can you adjust this? So the thing about the mocha pot is you actually can't adjust that much. This thing is a cool and a fickle mistress. You can adjust the heat and through kind of a Charles Law and Boyle's Law thing, adjusting the heat adjusts the amount of pressure in there, but you don't have a super tight control on it. The stuff starts brewing at a given pressure and you can't really adjust that. All you can do is adjust the heat after it starts brewing. For this reason, I would actually add uh, an extra detail into my previous video which is once this guy starts producing a little bit of coffee, to turn the flame down to the bare minimum uh, at which the coffee is still being produced. So this keeps the pressure at the very smallest it can be that will produce coffee, and as a result, the temperature at the very bare minimum it can be. An even more radical idea might be to put less ground coffee in the filter basket. The idea being that if you have less ground coffee, it's not packed as tightly, this will lower the threshold uh, of pressure required for the water to penetrate the coffee grinds and start brewing. Uh, so it can happen at a slightly lower temperature than otherwise would, uh, and at a lower pressure, uh, extracting a bit less. Uh, although, I understand that that might sound a bit sacrilegious to some of you to actually put less coffee in the basket, but something to try. So can you adjust these things? Not too much, not too much. Uh, one thing I would advise is with the beans. So make sure you're using good beans, make sure that they're fresh, make sure they're roasted relatively recently and ground relatively fresh. Make sure you're grinding them with a consistent grind size. Don't fool around with a blade grinder. You need a conical burr grinder to get a consistent grind size or you get a coffee shop to do it for you. Uh, and you can adjust that. So if you're going in the direction of too bitter and you're over brewed, you can grind more coarsely. That's something you can fine tune. Now something else that matters is the kind of beans you're using. Uh, this is an overlooked variable. Darker roast beans, their cellular structures have been broken down more so they extract more quickly. You wanna stay away from dark roast beans if you're using a mocha pot because this thing already tends to over brew. So stay away from dark roast, especially anything that's labeled espresso roast. I know it's counterintuitive, you're making something that's sometimes called stovetop espresso, but it's just designed to extract that much faster. So you go for a medium or a light roast, and that'll buy you a bit more time before the stuff overbrews. Uh, make sure that your water supply is good. Uh, if you have hard water, it might make a big difference if you use filtered water or something like that. So there are these things that you can play around with that you can tweak that can maybe improve your overall results. But honestly, this is not the most precise way to do things. You, you don't have that much control. You have almost no control over the brew time. Now, one thing you might want to do if you want a brewing process where you have more control is instead of going for a mocha pot, you can go for a siphon brew. It works on the same principle in terms of uh, you boil a little bit of water to push water up through it, but everything else about it is polar opposite. Uh, instead of a metal container that conducts heat away, and then you have this big variation in brewing temperature throughout the process, uh, they're made out of glass. Uh, instead of forcing it up through the grinds, requiring a certain amount of pressure for it to rise, 
um, you add the grinds in afterwards. It's a, a much more controlled process. You can control the temperature for the duration exactly. You can control the exact duration. Uh, so overall, it's a much more stable way to do things. Uh, if, on the other hand, you're kind of more interested in a nice simple setup that makes you coffee very quick and is more of like an espresso strength thing, you might want to consider looking at an AeroPress. And I have a video about AeroPress. Uh, an AeroPress is hand pressurized. So that means that when you adjust the pressure, it's not coming at the expense of something like temperature or something like that. The, the variables are decoupled. So you can choose the temperature independently of the pressure and adjusting one doesn't have an impact on the other. Uh, the other thing I've found is that the AeroPress pulls out a very consistent uh, cup of quality coffee uh, and it's almost never over bitter. Uh, in fact, I notice kind of a natural sweetness that comes out of the beans that way. Uh, and it's a 30 second process and the cleanup is super easy. So you might just want to give up on the mocha altogether if you've experimented around and looked around at all the details and you still don't get something to your satisfaction. So thanks again everybody for watching. Uh, I hope this was helpful. Uh, I appreciate the comments and the feedback and everybody. Uh, have a great day.